Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Nadia Akila binti Cik Mahmud. You can call me Nadia. Today, we will learn about the differences between inflational and derivational properties. The difference is, inflational, it never changes categories. Meanwhile, derivational, it always or sometimes changes the syntactic category or meaning of the word from its base. That's all. Thank you. Hmm, don't you think that it's too fast and it is too easy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let us do it properly once again. So, we will learn about the differences between inflational and derivational properties, which are First, relevance to syntax. Second, position relative to base. Third, word class change. And fourth, iteration. We need to know the differences to tell people and also to uh, acknowledge that there are differences between inflational and derivational morphemes. The first topic, which is relevance to the syntax. This property only applies to inflections, while derivations is in the opposite, which it doesn't relevant to the syntax at all. There is a term that you need to remember in this topic called agreement, which includes target and also controller. Both of them, target and also controller, need to achieve an agreement to form a grammatically correct sentence. A controller is usually a noun, a pronoun, or a noun phrase, where it controls the target. For example, here, a man sings. A man is the controller, it controls the word after that, which is a verb, sings, the target. Therefore, a man is singular. He controls the word verb sing, so it added with the morphing s becomes a man sings. Same goes with the second example here, this lady and also these ladies. Note that target here is this and also these. Therefore, the controller is lady and also ladies. If we see lady here, we automatically know that this is a singular. Therefore, we choose this instead of these. So it becomes this lady and also these ladies. There are several agreements like noun, noun agreement for adjective and also demonstrative. And there is number, person and sometimes gender agreements for verb. Gender agreements, for example, you can see in the Arabic language. Second property is position relative to base. Canonical inflectional trait expressed at word periphery. Periphery here means by the end of the word. However, canonical derivational trait expressed closer to the base, or we call it closer to the root. Therefore, derivational affix appears closer to root as an inner layer, while inflectional affix as an outer layer that appears far from the root. For example here, the word movements. If we divide it, it will become move, which is a root, men, a derivational morphing, and s, an inflectional morphing. So uh, this is a proof that inflectional is far from the root when there is a derivational. The second example here, which is a wrong example, as you can see, there is an asterisk used here to show a grammatically wrong word. If we move inflectional closer to the root, it becomes movement. It is grammatically wrong. Okay. The third property is word class change, or simply called as change of grammatical class. For canonical inflectional, there is no changes happen of the word class. For example, the words here, the first is run, which is a verb. When added with an S, an inflectional morphing, it becomes runs, which is also a verb. And the second example here, a noun, B, added with an S, added with S, it becomes Bs, which is also a noun. Oppositely, there are sometimes changes of the grammatical class 
for canonical derivation. For instance, the word win here, which is a noun, when added with a derivational morphing y, it becomes an adjective, windy. The last property is iteration, which means the repetition of a morpheme. It doesn't apply to inflections, as it is impossible to double up or to repeat the morphemes. For example, we want to tell people that we have eaten way before, like 5 hours ago, and we will add the inflectional morpheme to the already past tense word eaten. We added ed. So it becomes eated. It is grammatically wrong. Same goes is uh, if we want uh, to say a set of pens, instead of using a set of pens, we just want add, uh, to add uh, an inflectional morpheme to the already plural word pen, pens, by adding es becomes pencils. It is also grammatically wrong. Unlike inflections, it is possible to repeat or to double up the derivation of morpheme. For example, we want to mention about our ancestor who is way higher than the higher than our great grandfather in the tree map. Then we double up the word quit here becomes great great grandfather which also means the second great grandfather. It is grammatically correct. To recap, there are five differences between inflectional and derivational property that we have learned today. First, relevance to syntax. Second, position relative to base. Third, word cost change and also iteration. That's all from me. Thank you. Bye.